Case IH Axial Flow Combines can be used in a wide variety of crop and field conditions. That's why it's important to our customers that Case IH dealers can provide the knowledge needed to set up their combines for maximum efficiency. In this videotape, we will show you information on optional equipment available on Case IH combines and headers. Jim Minahan from our product support group will show and explain the many options available. This portion of our program is going to deal with header options. These headers can be ordered with several attachments. The 1000 series corn head, the 1020 flex header with a pickup reel, the 1010 rigid header with a bat reel, and the 1015 pickup header. To begin our header options section, we're going to talk about the 1015 pickup header and the various auger sprockets that can be put on to drive our auger at different speeds for varying crop conditions. If we tend to get into a lighter crop, we'd want to tend to speed the auger up. As we get into a heavier crop, we'd want to tend to slow the auger down. Another option for our 10-15 pickup header is auger flight extensions. The extensions can be added to the right or to the left, especially for light crops, forcing the windrow in a thicker mat underneath the tube and aiding our feeder chain to take the material away from the auger. The 1000 series headers can be equipped with three different reels. Bat reel, steel tine pickup, or the plastic tine pickup reel. Plastic tine reel is generally used on a 1020 header, particularly in soybeans, and reduces the effect of beans wrapping around the reel while in operation. The steel tine reel is used for rice. The bat reel is generally used on the 1010 rigid header and is used in dry cereal crops. Occasionally when using pickup reels, we get into a crop condition, especially in soybeans and even in small grains where morning glories and tie vines have gotten into the crop and they want to have a tendency to wrap on our reel. And to overcome that problem, we provide as an attachment an extra tine to reduce this wrappage that may occur on the end of our reels. Our steel tine reels can run into a similar problem that we discussed with our plastic tine, in that weeds may want to wrap between the end of the reel and our header end sheets. And to overcome this problem, we can purchase this extra reel tine attachment to be placed on the end of our bats. And for the bat reel, we have this reel end guard, which will stop material from wrapping around the reel. The 1000 series headers has available two different knife systems. The three inch knife system for the 1010 header, the inch and a half knife system for the 1020 header. Also on the 1020 header, it can be ordered with the three inch knife system, as well as the 1010 header can be ordered with the inch and a half knife. Also as a parts option, we have plant lifters, one for the three inch knife system, one for the inch and a half knife. These lifters attach to the guards so that we can lift down tangled crop, aiding the knife getting a good clean cut. A header option which can help an operator is this hydraulic reel fore and aft. This system will allow the reel to go down and forward for down crop or be pulled to the rear for good standing crop. This is controlled by an electric switch in the cab and can be done while on the go. Another option on a 1000 series headers is a customer requested extra knife. Occasionally we've had customers ask us where we could carry an extra knife. Well, we can carry it here in the frame of this header. The knife can be ordered as an option for added customer convenience. For the 1020 header, we have auxiliary skid shoes. These shoes are mounted underneath the header, three per row, 
If the header is used in dry sand, mud, or small stone conditions. In sand or mud, the roll may not withstand the pressure that the standard skid shoes put on it, and so the roll or bed will be squished down. These skid plates will then add enough flotation to the bar to pick our knife up out of the mud or the sand. Likewise, if we're in small stony conditions, we can put these skid shoes on to increase our height to cut. On occasion, we've come across customers with rigid headers such as this 1010 that would like to have the feature of automatic header control. And with this array of parts, we can attach these to a rigid header and have the automatic header control feature. Further into our header attachment section, we're going to talk about the attachments for our corn head. One of these being the cross auger slip clutch. The corn head cross auger slip clutch is used to protect the auger in case the corn head should pick up a rock. Moving to the front of our corn head, we have a single row conversion unit here to take 30 inch row spacings down to 28. It takes a new center divider, hinge points, slip clutch, and slip clutch seals. Shown here are three corn head drive sprockets. The large one is our standard sprocket used to drive the rolls at our standard speed. The middle sprocket is our intermediate sprocket used to slow the rolls down slightly such that if the corn head is being operated in an infested field where bugs or boars have worked on the ears or where there's been some wind damage and the stalks are leaning a little bit, we want to slow the rolls down to stop the stalks from flopping, causing ears to be flopped off and dropped under the ground. This sprocket, or the intermediate sprocket, is shipped with each corn head. The smaller sprocket is used to slow our roll speeds down further, such if we are in heavily infested crop or the crops laying flat on the ground. These sprockets can be added to this shaft which drives our gear cases. This shield I'm holding is our corn head wheel shield. This shield is used to deflect leaning corn from the adjoining row from getting in between our drive tire and being pushed over by our pivoting ladder. These are corn head weed knives. They're used in corn fields that are heavily infested with weeds or grass, and they're used to stop wrapping in the roll. They are mounted on the roll frame behind the standard weed knife. With the aid of this machine, we're going to talk about our dual wheel attachment. This attachment is for extra flotation and stability of our machine. This attachment allows us to position the inner set of wheels on 120 inch centers, the outer wheels to 180 inch centers. This allows us to position wheels either side of a row, such as in 30 inch row beds, for example. This attachment consists of a pivoting ladder, appropriate spacers for our operator's deck, operator's handrails, a stiffener for the operator's deck, dual wheels, and special bolts on the end of the final drive shaft to attach the dual wheels, a frame extension to the main axle frame to move the final drive outward, as well as a truss rod for the main axle. Occasionally, customers require different wheel tread widths because of various row spacings. And shown here are the 2 inch and 3 inch wheel spacers which mount between the final drive shaft and our main drive wheel. Also we have axle extensions which mount to the axle mainframe and our final drive. Accompanying these parts will also be the appropriate spacers for our operator's deck as well as handrails. For the 1600 series combine we offer four 
adjustable guide axles to better suit customer roll spacings and tire sizes. For the 1600 series combines, we offer the System 2 power guide axle. One of its major features is it allows us to use larger tires. We do not have to disconnect the hubs for transportation and we can turn it on and off from the cab at our leisure. It's used when there is mud, sand, or similar soft soil conditions where we need extra flotation and power to propel our machine through the field. Counterbalancing of our axial flow combine is important because with different mainframes of our combine and header widths, we need to maintain good steering control to our guide wheels. And to provide this, we have this weight bracket and weights, which can be mounted to the guide axle support at the back of the combine. Another attachment for our chassis is a two-speed hydrostatic drive motor that's attached to the transmission. To control this, there is a switch in the cab which electronically controls a control valve on the two-speed motor. What's this purpose? The two-speed motor has its greatest advantage when we're working in adverse conditions such as mud and sand. Under those conditions, the control valve will monitor pressure it takes to drive the combine through the field, and as it reaches 3200 PSI, begins to slow down, adding torque into our transmission, and this will continue until we drop below 3200 PSI, then the speed of the motor will be back to the high side. Another option for our combine chassis is this track attachment. It's used particularly when we are in muddy rice conditions. This helps float the combine and harvest our grain. On a 1680, we have a six roller frame, and for the 1660, we have a five roller frame. This attachment also can be used in any other harvesting condition where we have a lot of mud and need to float the combine to do our harvesting. By removing our header, let's go look into our feeder house and see what options are available. We're going to be discussing our feeder housing attachments. One of those items is our feeder chain slats for our rice machines are serrated. The bar itself is slightly lighter in size and in thickness than the standard one for our grain machines. But to get the strength back into our bar, the serration has been riveted back into it. The serrations help take the material away from our header auger and take the material up the feeder house so that the material can be thrashed evenly in our separator housing. This bar is at an eight pitch spacing where the heavier slat is at a six pitch spacing standard in our grain machines. This bar also has a feature that it can be bolted on now and ordered through parts in this manner. Since it's bolt on feature, we do not have to remove the chain in order to exchange a bent or broken slat. A purchaser of a combine can also have in the machine as an option a stone retarder drum. The chain has recessed areas to run in such that the center portion of the drum will run close to the slat itself such that if the header should pick up a rock and the rock get this far into the feeder housing the slat will pinch the rock against the feeder bottom and with the drum constructed the way it is will stop the bar from being bent by the rock inward. Likewise to stop the bottom from being bent we have a channel underneath the feeder housing running the width of it to reinforce the bottom so it does not get bent at this time. A further item is a feeder bottom. As an option through parts, we can get a perforated feeder bottom, which has many holes in it to relieve sand and dirt and small chaff, such that 
we may be picking up in windrows from edible beans and so forth. One thing to remember as we get into small grains or seed crops, we have to cover these holes up because those small seeds and so forth can fall out. For machines, it's going to be operated in a heavy crop that may be down and lodged such as rice or even a windrowed crop that may be bunched and have sticky material underneath it. The owner has the option to order a feeder reverser which is located behind this shield. The reverser is run electronically with a starter motor which can propel the feeder chain in reverse with about 1,100 foot-pounds of torque to force the slug back down the feeder house. A second option that we have with our machine coupled with a 1000 series header is that if we raise the reel all the way up, we can also raise the auger two inches off the bottom and as the reverser is propelling the feeder house, likewise the header auger is going to reverse and propel the slug back out onto the ground. For machines, it's going to be used in severe rocky conditions. We have this rock trap attachment which fits in between the rear of the feeder house and in front of the transition cone, which gives us an opportunity with this beater to flail or beat the material as it's coming over this rock trap and propel the rocks down into this box. Then when we're in those conditions, we should check this box frequently so that we do not get too full of rocks and become inoperative. On the rock trap beater, we can replace this wear bar with a serrated bar, which will help us feed green sticky material, as well as to help feed short green crop, is that we put a bar grate over the top of the box to help bridge or allow the material that's short and green to pass through this area on into the transition cone. Combines that are going to be operated with large headers, such as 30 foot and large corn heads, we can equip our machine with an accumulator, which acts as a shock absorber in our hydraulic system to cushion the loads as the machine goes over rough terrains. This makes it easy on the chassis and the mainframe of our machine, as well as our headers. It makes it easier on the operator in the cab. For customers that will be using larger headers, 30 foot, for example, as well as eight row corn heads, we have an auxiliary third cylinder which can be installed underneath the feeder house for the added weight. In this section, we're going to deal with options and attachments that can be added to the rotor or to the separator housing. To begin with, we have our small wire concave standard in grain and is used in wheat and other small seed crops. Next, we have large wire concaves, which are standard in corn, rice, and milo, or any other large seed crop. It gives us extra separation under those conditions. Occasionally, we'll have operators that get into a hard threshing of wheat or small seed. We offer these interrupter bars through parts. They can be installed in the number one or two concave and with the eight of these spacers it positions the bar between the crossbars allowing separation to pass down around the wires. The interrupter bar can also be attached to the large wire concave. In either case after the interrupter bars have been put in position the clips should be bent from the rear. This will hold the interrupter bar in place. Also, we have found that we can use these interrupter bars in the number three concave underneath the tailings delivery auger for extra threshing of our tailings return. Next, back in the separator grade area, we have three different types shown here. One, which I'm in indicating here is slotted, which is standard in small grain. Next is our bar grate, which is standard for corn and rice and any other green sticky material. And thirdly, we have a solid grate, which is used primarily in sunflowers or any other crop which 
the stalk or the stem breaks up and can come down and congest onto our cleaning system. Next, to enhance the flow of material over the separator grade area, we have a notched bar. This is predominantly used when we get into green milo or any other crop that resists movements over the separator grade area. In the axial flow combine, we offer two rotors, our standard grain and our specialty rotor. The standard grain rotor is used in all of our small seeds, cereal crops, corn and soybean. It has impeller blades, helical rasp bars, straight rasp bars, and straight separator bars. And since seeds and plant structures are ever changing, this has brought about the design of our specialty rotor. The specialty rotor, what crops is it used in? It can harvest all the crops that our standard grain rotor can. But it has a special advantage if our crop is viney, green, sticky, and wet. Why is that? Well, if we look at our rasp bar spacing and their construction, we see that there's many more of them. Over the concave area, they are standard, similar shape as we saw on our standard grain rotor. But as we get back onto the separator grade area, the rasp bar has a spike. Why is that? Well, up front, with the rasp bars in this configuration, it effectively keeps this viney, green, sticky material moving over the concaves for adequate threshing and separation. With the material coming on back into our separator grade areas, we need to keep it more active, so with the use of this spike will aid in affecting good separation prior to discharging the straw out the back of the rotor. Now, as we get into some wet corn and high yield, shipped with each specialty rotor will be straight separator bars. They will be used in the separator grade area to slow the material down slightly to get adequate separation prior to discharging the straw. Sometimes our combines are subjected to crop conditions which are very abrasive whether it be soils or the crop itself. And to withstand these abrasiveness, we have a special transition cone which will resist the wear, as well as heat treated concaves, chromed parts that will attach to our standard rotor, such as this straight separator bar, and the rasp bars, impeller wear blades. Likewise, with our specialty rotor, all the parts that attach to the rotor, rasps, separator bars, and kickers are also chrome. Likewise, in those conditions, the wire that holds our directional vanes and our sieves can wear. So there is a piano wire to reinforce that or stop the vibration, increasing the wear life of our machine throughout. And this is called a custom cutter wear package. Our next discussion about attachments is going to be with the cleaning system. In the heart of the cleaning system is our sieves. Since our combine is subjected to many different seeds the world over and harvesting conditions, we have to make our machine adaptable to those environments. So to start with, we have our inch and an eighth sieve, which is standard for grain, close slat design. Second sieve shown here is a closed slat inch and five eighths design primarily used for green milo and any other crop condition such as that. Our corn slat sieve, inch and five eighths, deeper fingers, more open, standard for our corn machines or any other large seed where we use lots of air and need lots of capacity for separation. A Peterson sieve, an inch and an eighth spacing. The veins are constructed a little bit different in that there's a finger on the back side such that it will stop long straws from going down further into the cleaning system. This is primarily used in specialty seed crops such as carrots, lettuce, onions, and so forth. 
In the bottom of our cleaning system, we have our shoe sieves. This is our standard shoe sieve at an inch and an eighth spacing in its general purpose. And for our customers who are looking for a little extra capacity, particularly in corn, we have this inch and five eighths close slat shoe sieve design. It also can be used in other crops which have large seeds demanding high capacity. A further attachment that can be put onto our cleaning system is the alfalfa package, which is purchased through our part system. This package consists of a 10th hole sieve sections, which is mounted to the standard shoe sieve, thereby allowing the directional veins of the shoe sieve to direct air up through the holes, keeping the fines out of our sample. To assist this further, on the 1400 series combines, we will add this air deflector because in seed alfalfa or any other light seed crop, we use reduced air, thereby we need to take advantage of this reduced air pressure, thereby redirecting it up through the mat, assisting in keeping a clean sample. On the 1600 series, it's already there or is standard equipment. And since seed alfalfa is formed in a curl or a pod that is in a circle form, it likes to roll. So to force these curls out onto the cleaning system further, we have this deflector that bolts to the grain pan, thereby keeping the curls out on the cleaning system and not allowing them to roll into our clean sample, ending up in the grain tank. The grain pan finger cover, which is a portion of our seed alfalfa kit, is standard in our 1600 series grain machines. This finger cover can be purchased through our part system and placed in corn machines should we get in a condition where the corn cobs are breaking up and falling in front of the shoe sieve and those pieces ending up in the grain tank. On occasion, our combines are subjected to side hill operation. And if a machine stays on a slope long enough, the chaff and grain load can work to the low side of the machine. And to restrict that, we can position these dividers in three locations, or four as the case may be in a 1680, to help hold the material in the sections of our sieve. To complement this, we also have dividers that attach to the grain pan to help keep this grain in this particular sections of our sieve. There are conditions once in a while when customers will be cutting high stubble such as in corn or in milo. In those two particular crops, we have a lot of leaf and trash that can blow around the machine and get into our cleaning system through the fan. And to eliminate this, we have large screens on the left and right-hand side of the combine, as well as underneath, to stop any of this material from getting into the cleaning system. And with this array of parts, we can eliminate that problem. On occasion, we have customers operating combines in conditions where the fan is too fast. This could be in light grasses, flowers such as marigolds, bachelor buttons, and so forth. So to slow this fan down, to get us a slower speed, we have an attachment that mounts in this general area and consists of these parts. As customers, operators, and owners of our combines get into some varying crop conditions, such as edible beans, for example, which in a windrow may have a lot of sand and extra trash that we do not want in our sample in the grain tank, we can put in these perforated screens for the lower clean grain auger trough, the connecting tube, lower clean grain elevator boot door, as well as the connecting pipe and the elevator door for our tailings return. This will remove this unwanted material from our beans as well as soybeans and corn. On occasion, combines are operated in a weedy condition such as nightshade, which as the nightshade passes through the machine, some of the saps come out and begin to collect on various items, particularly in our elevators. And to keep the elevator sidewalls clean, we can purchase this steel flight 
to replace one or two of the rubber flights in our elevator system, whether it be the clean grain or a tailings elevator. Shown here is the horizontal loading auger tube with a perforated section. This is used mostly in corn and soybean harvest if a customer wants to remove fines and unwanted small particles from the grain sample before it is dumped into a truck or wagon. A cover is provided when a customer is going to be operating in small grains. Because of increased header widths, we have an option longer unloading auger tube for a 1660 combine. The standard tube is 136 inches long. The option tube is 172. Likewise, for the 1680, while using 30 foot headers, we can increase our unloading auger length, which is standard at 172 to 208 inches. With these longer unloading augers, it makes it more convenient to unload on the go while using 30 foot headers and eight row corn heads, for example. Within the cab of the axial flow combine, we have several optional electronic controls, one of which is our automatic header control. The automatic header height control, while in the automatic mode, will control headers down and up, as well as the sensitivity of our hydraulic system. Next, we have our automatic reel-to-ground speed. When the reel-to-ground speed switch is placed in the automatic position, the reel and ground speeds are synchronized. As the combine speeds up, the reel will speed up. Or if the combine slows down, the reel will slow down. This frees the operator for other duties within the cab. A further option is our reel position fore and aft. The reel fore and aft switch allows the operator to reposition the reel hydraulically while on the go, making our headers more efficient in saving grain. A further option is our feeder reverser. The feeder reverser switch allows the operator to reverse the direction of the feeder chain to back out a slug of material that is wedged in the feeder housing. The automatic feeder cutoff is an option used with the shaft speed monitoring system. A sensor monitors the feeder housing dry shaft. If a slug of material should wedge in the feeder housing causing the feeder chain to stop, the automatic feeder cutoff will shut off the feeder engaging switch. This feature can save wear and tear on the feeder slip clutch. Another electronic feature is the grain scan monitor. This is a time and distance monitoring system which monitors grain losses from the rotor and cleaning system. The sensors are located at the rear of the rotor cage and at the rear of the chaffer sieve. The monitor will alert the operator to unacceptable grain losses. For operator comfort, we have a grammar control air suspension seat. With a little electric pump underneath, we can raise and lower the seat, as well as change the contours for operator comfort, reducing fatigue over the long hours. Because of varying wheel tread widths and tire sizes, there may be the need to use narrow and wide operator deck spacers in order to position the ladder out away from our wheels properly. Another feature we offer for our operator's deck is our pivoting ladder. It's used when we're going to subject a combine to mud or soft soil conditions, as well as when we use narrower width headers to keep the ladder out of the crop. When the operator's ladder has been repositioned out because of varying tire tread widths, we need to install this handrail extension for operator safety. On occasion, we may want our machine to chop up the straw finer so that we can incorporate the straw particles or corn cobs into the soil and they dissipate quickly. 
shown here in this array of parts is our optional factory installed straw chopper. It also can be ordered as a fuel attachment. There are two adjustments also connected with this in that we can regulate the length of straw by adjusting the stationary knife as well as we have a high speed and low speed operation high being for wheat low being for corn on the back of our axial flow combines we have straw spreader hoop shields they're standard on our corn machines and are an option for our grain machines these shields are used to deflect corn cobs away from the side of our separator side sheets so that the cobs are not thrown into belt drives and our cleaning fan. Shown here is a completing package for our older headers, 800 and 900 series, which allows us to put them onto our 1600 series combines and picks up the PTO shaft feature. In the interest of safety, we should encourage our customers to purchase fire extinguishers and mount one here by the operator's cab as well as one back on our service deck. Now that we've reviewed the attachments and options for our axial flow combines to better suit our customers' needs, let's go cut some grain.